Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the functional anatomy of posterior pituitary gland. To know about the posterior pituitary gland, we are going to the first slide. In this slide, we can see the structure of pituitary gland, which is attached with the hypothalamus. This is the hypothalamus. This is the pituitary stalk, and this is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is having two lobes. This is the anterior pituitary gland, and this is the posterior pituitary gland. In the previous lecture, we have learned about the anterior pituitary gland, and today we are going to learn about the anterior pituitary gland. As we know that the posterior pituitary gland is called neurohypophysis, so it means that posterior pituitary gland is the part of brain. and anterior pituitary gland is the part of endocrine system so the posterior pituitary gland do not contain any endocrine cell uh, actually the posterior pituitary gland is also supervised by the uh, hypothalamus in the hypothalamus we know that there are four major types of nuclei uh, the two nuclei which uh, supervise or which control the function of the posterior pituitary gland are shown in the figure shown in the diagram in this diagram we can see two nuclei inside the hypothalamus this nucleus represent the paraventricular nucleus and this nucleus represent the supra optic nucleus this is called paraventricular nucleus because this is parallel with the third ventricle or this is adjacent with the third ventricle and this is called supra optic nucleus because this nucleus is above the optic chiasma over here there is optic chiasma that is why this is called supra optic nuclear so uh, as we know that the nucleus is the collection of cell bodies so both of these nuclei represent the collection of cell bodies the paraventricular nucleus contain the cell bodies which are responsible for the synthesis of oxytocin while the supra optic nucleus contains the cell bodies which are responsible for the synthesis of vasopressin are also called anti diuretic hormone so the oxytocin is transferred from the paraventricular nucleus to the posterior pituitary gland with the help of exons this is the collection of exon which form a tract the collection of exon is called tract so over here this tract is called paraventricular hypophyseal tract while the tract which transport the anti diuretic hormone from the supra optic nucleus to the posterior pituitary gland this tract is called supra optic hypophyseal tract and both of these tracts are combinedly known as hypothalamo hypophyseal tract so the hormones which are synthesized inside the nuclei are transferred to this tract to the exonal terminal and the area where the exonal terminal exists is called infundibular process this is the infundibulum this area which attaches the pituitary gland with the hypothalamus is called infundibulum while this area where the exonal terminal exists is called infundibular process now coming toward the detail of posterior pituitary gland to know about the detail we should know about some structures this structure represent the blood vessel in which the blood flow from the inferior hypophyseal artery to the posterior hypophyseal vein with the help of plexus that is called plexus of infundibular process or you can say the capillary plexus of infundibular process this is called the capillary plexus of infundibular process because this is near the infundibular process this capillary network is near the infundibular process that is why this is called the capillary plexus of infundibular process so the hormones are stored inside the neuronal terminal or here inside the vesicle and upon the stimulation of these vesicle these hormones are transferred to the capillary plexus and from the capillary plexus this hormone is transferred to the target site we will know about that later now coming towards the upper part this is the supra optic nucleus near the supra optic nucleus there is another small nucleus that is called median preoptic nucleus 
above the median free optic nucleus there is a layer as we know that there is a layer and above the layer or here there is third ventricle as we know that the third ventricle is above the hypothalamus so the third ventricle is having a layer on ventral side this layer is called lamina terminalis now coming toward the detail so this layer contain two types of collection of cell or hair above the median free optic nucleus this collection of cell contain the osmoreceptor the cell inside these uh, small organs are called osmoreceptor and this collection of cell above the median free optic nucleus is called organum vasculosum and this collection of cell above the median free optic nucleus is called sub fornical organ i'm going to write these terminologies which will help in understanding lt is for lamina terminalis the ov is for organum musculosum and the SFO is for sub fornical organ so the organum musculosum and the sub fornical organ contain collection of cell contain large number of cells and each of this these cells are called each of these cells are called osmoreceptors. We can also see or hear a blood vessel. Uh, there is a capillary or hair, and this capillary is uh, in contact with this lamina terminalis and these two types of collections of cells. So, uh, or hair, the capillary is normal capillary. Capillary is not uh, making any blood brain barrier. As so the blood can flow from this capillary to these cells the, this blood can bath uh, these group of cells and what does these group of cells do when the blood come in contact with these collection of cells these collection of cells detect the concentration of solute inside these uh, the concentration of solute inside the blood which come from this blood vessel is the blood brain barrier is broken in this area because this uh, in this area the capillaries can allow the blood to come in contact with the, uh, these uh, collection of cells so when these cells come in contact with the blood and the blood is having low amount of uh, water and high amount of solute it means that the blood is hyper or smaller when there is hyperosmolality of the blood when the concentration of solute is very high and the concentration of water is very low the the shrinkage of uh, these cells occur and the shrinkage of uh, these cells uh, can activate what the shrinkage of these cells can activate or stimulate the median free optic nucleus and the median free optic nucleus do what it uh, uh, give signal to the uh, supra optic nucleus and inside the, you can see that the supra optic nucleus is in uh, close uh, contact with the median pre optic nucleus so the supra optic nucleus is activated or stimulated or the action potential is generated inside those the the cell bodies of the supra optic nucleus so it transfer the action potential through the supra optic hypophyseal track towards the infundibular process toward the nerve ending so over here in the nerve ending the vesicles are there and those vesicles contain what those vesicles contain the ox the, those vesicles contain the vasopressin and that vasopressin is secreted to the blood vessel to the capillary plexus and from this uh, capillary plexus the blood goes throughout the body and circulate to each and every part of the body it also come in contact with the kidney it also goes to the kidney when this blood reaches the kidney what uh, does it do i'm going to show you it come in contact with the nephron 
uh, as we know that this is a nephron this is the glomerulus this is the boom and capsule and this is the uh, proximal convoluted tubule this is the uh, descending loop this is the loop of henle this is the ascending loop this is the distal convoluted tubule and this is the collecting duct we will know about uh, the effect of adh or effect of vasopressin on the collecting duct so the adh which is secreted from the posterior pituitary gland upon the stimulation of the supra optic nucleus that adh come in contact with the collecting duct and collecting duct uh, contain the special type of cell which are called principal cells so for example this is the sagittal plane of the collecting duct and this sagittal plane of the collecting duct shows that this is a cell on the side of the lumen of the collecting duct so this principal cell is in contact with the blood vessel so from the blood vessel the adh will be secreted to the interstitial phase from the interstitial phase this adh will or uh, this vasopressin will come in contact with the receptor on this principal cell this receptor is called vasopressin receptor when this adh combine with the vasopressin receptor it uh, activate this receptor and the internal domain of this uh, uh, vasopressin receptor goes under conformational changes and this internal receptor or this internal domain of this receptor will activate in an enzyme inside uh, this uh, principal cell this enzyme is called adenylyl cyclase and when this adenylyl cyclase is activated this adenylyl cyclase will convert the atp inside this uh, uh, principal cell into camp so the activation of this enzyme will, will lead to the uh, formation of camp cyclic adenosine monophosphate so, so this cyclic adenosine monophosphate will uh, activate the protein kinase a so this protein kinase a will go to the nucleus of this cell when this uh, protein kinase a reaches inside this nucleus what it does it do so when the protein kinase a come inside this uh, nucleus it will activate the transcription factor and that transcription factor will activate the dna and that dna will form a messenger rna and that messenger rna will go outside this nucleus and uh, when this messenger rna come outside this nucleus this messenger rna will form some protein and those protein will combine together to make some forin to make some channels and those channels are called aquaporin 2 and those aquaporin which are synthesized upon the stimulation of this uh, protein kinase a that that aquaporin will be uh, incorporated inside uh, this uh, the luminal side up uh, this cell this cell membrane so in short the adh is responsible for the synthesis of special type of channel that is called aquaporin 2 and these channels are incorporated on the spot inside this cell membrane when these channels are incorporated inside the cell membrane this allow the flow of water from collecting duct to the principal cell when this water is transferred to the collecting uh, from the collecting duct to this principal cell this water is transferred from this principal cell to the interstitial space uh, through another type of aquaporin channel that is called aquaporin 3 aquaporin 4 and this water is transferred from the interstitial space to the blood vessel and when it transfer it is transferred toward the blood vessel the volume of blood is increased or uh, the volume of water inside the blood is increased so the osmolarity of the blood is decreased so this whole mechanism shows that when the concentration of uh, solute inside the blood is increased or when the osmolarity of the blood is increased what does uh, happen inside the blood the adh is secreted from the posterior pituitary gland and that adh uh, that adh is responsible for the compensation of the blood volume are responsible for the increase of water inside the blood it increased the water concentration inside the blood this is called antidiuretic hormone because this is antidiuresis this is against the diuresis diuresis mean urination diuresis mean to pee so 
when the ADH is secreted, the ADH leads to the uh, decreased volume of urine or decreased volume of water inside the urine. The urine which is collected after the high concentration of ADH in the blood, the urine will have low volume of water because a large volume of water will be will be absorbed through these aquaporin 2 channels so we should know that uh, the adh is secreted when the supraoptic nucleus is activated and supraoptic nucleus is activated when the osmoreceptor are activated and the osmoreceptor are activated when there is low blood volume or when there is low blood pressure or when there is high concentration of solute inside the blood or one other condition is also pain and when they when an individual is going through pain also this uh, uh, these osmoreceptors are activated now coming towards the oxytocin to know about the oxytocin we are going to the next slides in this slide we can see this is warm our uterus i'm going to magnify it this worm contain the internal layer that is called endometrium and uh, the second layer that is called myometrium the myometrium contain muscles this opening of the worm or this opening of the uterus is called cervix this cervix contains some receptors which are called stretch receptors when the fetus become nine months and it get matured it, and this is ready for the birth so what happens this apply this fetus apply pressure on the surrounding this fetus also apply pressure on the cervix so when this fetus apply pressure on the cervix what happens? the stretch receptors are activated and when the stretch receptors are activated what happens this stretch these stretch receptors are connected with the nervous system the efferent somatic nerve or the efferent somatic neurons are connected with the stretch receptor of the cervix so when this fetus uh, apply pressure on the cervix the stretch receptors are activated and the stretch receptor uh, give signal or give uh, action potential to the uh, efferent somatic nerve or uh, efferent somatic neuron so this efferent somatic neuron pass the signal towards the spinal cord and the, from spinal cord it goes toward the brain and from the brain it goes to the it goes to the respective nucleus inside what inside the hypothalamus and this nucleus is called paraventricular nucleus this nucleus is responsible for the synthesis of what this is responsible for the synthesis of oxytocin so this nucleus uh, give the signal towards the uh, exon and that exon pass the signal or pass the action potential toward the nerve ending over here and those nerve ending inside the infundibular process uh, produce what that produce oxytocin and that they produce some vesicle that that have some vesicle uh, and those vesicles are uh, degranulated and those vesicles secrete what those vesicles secrete uh, oxytocin and that oxytocin is released into the blood when the oxytocin is released into the blood what happened that uh, oxytocin reaches the myometrium and when it reaches the myometrium it uh, combined with oxytocin receptor in the myometrium and when it combined with the oxytocin receptor and the myometrium it increased the calcium concentration inside the muscle cells of the myometrium and when the calcium concentration is increased inside the muscle cells of the myometrium the contraction of the myometrium take place when the myometrium get contracted the fetus apply pressure on the cervix the cervix get open and this fetus get out of the uterus when this when this fetus get out of the uterus it goes to the vaginal tube and through vaginal tube uh, the mother gave birth to the baby so the oxytocin which is released from the nerve ending of the posterior pituitary gland is responsible for the for the birth process one thing you should know that uh, uh, 
this vaginal tube or this vagina also contains some stretch receptors and uh, this these stretch receptors are activated when uh, these stretch receptors come in contact with the with pressure or come in contact with the sperm so when these stretch receptors are activated uh, the those efferent somatic nerve get uh, signal towards the paraventricular nucleus and this paraventricular nucleus when secrete uh, the oxytocin uh, this oxytocin goes towards the uh, again it goes towards the myometrium and it start the contraction process of the uterus though there is no baby over there there is no fetus still there is contraction process and that contraction of the uterus is called peristalsis and that peristaltic moment uh, is uh, provide provide uh, some significance to the sperm to go upward toward the fallopian tube so that peristaltic moment provides opportunity for the sperms to go from the cervix or go from uh, through the uterus to the fallopian tube and over there in the fallopian tube the ovum is there it combined with the ovum and fertilization occurs now coming towards the next slide in this slide we can see that this is female nipple uh, this nipple contain nerve ending nerve ending of apparent somatic neurons so when this nipple is sucked by the baby what happened the nerve ending provides signal towards the brain and uh, in the brain the signal is transferred to the paraventricular nucleus so the paraventricular nucleus gives signal to the nerve ending over here and that nerve ending secrete the oxytocin when oxytocin is released this oxytocin goes towards the uh, towards the muscles which are inside the mammary gland these muscles are all around some structures and these structures are called alveoli and these alveoli contain milk this the milk secretion or milk production uh, inside these alveoli take place with the help of uh, uh, with the help of prolactin and with the help of uh, leptinizing hormone so what happen when the uh, when the oxytocin is released toward this uh, these muscle these muscle are called myoepithelial cells so these myoepithelial cells get contracted when these myoepithelial cells uh, get contracted what happens the milk is ejected from the areola towards the opening of the breast so oxytocin is responsible for the ejection of milk from the breasts the oxytocin is also responsible for the transfer of sperm from the testes to the reproductive tract are the, the oxytocin is responsible for the ejection of the sperm so when the oxytocin is released the these this was difference is contracted and the contraction of was difference provides opportunity for the sperm to be ejected from the from this was difference towards the toward the reproductive tract so the oxytocin is responsible for the ejection of sperm during ejaculation.